or editors. So good morning and thank you for joining us for today's session. Uh, we will start today's session uh, that is Design Nuances Edu Series. So this is uh, Nora Nias from DQ Labs. I'm representing DQ Labs and we have started this series with certain objectives. So we have three main objectives. So the first one is that, you know, through this series, we are going to learn new topics, which is specific to design, architecture and fashion. So we will get to learn more about, you know, what these are and how these work. The next thing is that we get introduced to a new school or a university and understand their purpose. The other one is that you get to interact with an expert and observe knowledge that they share. So it is one of the most prestigious heads from that particular university or school that come here to have a conversation with us so that we get to understand more about their university as well as the topics related to design, architecture or fashion. So um, this would be about a one hour session. Uh, in the starting, we'll have a small introduction about the school and its heads, and then we'll have a topic uh, discussed. And at the end, we would have a question and answer session where you all can ask uh, your doubts to the respective person. So I guess we can start now. So today, uh, Dr. Anita Sushilan from Christ University School of Architecture has joined us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for taking your time and joining us here today. Uh, so the topic today is outreach of projects in architecture, which will be explained by ma'am herself. Uh, so Dr. Anita Sushilan here, who has uh, taken her time to join us, is the head and founding member of the School of Architecture, Christ deemed to be university. Uh, she has done PhD from SEPT University in India and has also done post-graduation in urban design from SEPT University and has also won the gold medal for it. Also, her bachelor's in architecture has been done from the Kerala University and again, she's a gold medalist in it. So, Dr. Anita Sushilan actually has uh, experience in architecture and urban design for over 28 years and she is also contributing extensively to innovate the pedagogy in architectural education towards an experiential learning process and outreach projects. So if you actually visit the Christ University and see the Department for Architecture, it is, you know, she is the lead who designed the structure and the, uh, the whole Department of Architecture along with the other faculty members. So I think she deserves a great appreciation for it because it's a really beautiful building out there. Uh, moreover, she is also a research investigator for the projects, uh, for various projects actually, and most of them include politics of ecology, uh, gender and materiality of Indian cities and etc. So um this is about the christ university school of architecture so this is one of the uh, most i should say um reputed universities in bangalore and to know more information about this institute you can find it on our dqh and this link will be also shared in the description below so over to you ma'am thank you nura thank you for the kind words and also this uh, sharing or uh, giving an opportunity to take this space uh, and to address to several students who are uh, key learners in design studies, especially in the realm of architecture. Uh, so thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Dion, and uh, the, all the entire team of DQ Labs. Uh, can I share my screen now? Sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. Is it good, Nora? Yes, ma'am, it's visible for us. It's visible, okay. So good morning, all students. Uh, welcome to this session uh, by School of Architecture, Christ Deemed to be University. On behalf of our Dean, Dr. Ivan Jews, Director, Dr. Father Thomas TV, myself, Dr. Anita, um, heading School of Architecture, uh, Christ Deemed to be University. Today's masterclass, as I'm told, 
uh, is a 30 minute long discussion on certain very specific and emerging areas in the realm of architectural education. That is outreach projects. How do we involve or include outreach projects as part of architectural education? This is one of its kind in nationally uh, at School of Architecture offered to the students at the undergraduate level. Uh, so this masterclass uh, talks about, because it's always very important for us to know through a case how it is applied, how it is taught, and what is that the graduate is uh, uh, taking back home as an outcome is very important to be discussed. So hence, we thought, uh, let us uh, the, portray the kind of uh, pedagogy that we are um, um, uh, enforcing it at uh, School of Architecture and thereby the outcome of uh, this particular pedagogy. So uh, before I get on with the outreach project as a um, um, outcome of uh, the pedagogy, let us understand also as, see, outreach projects are, uh, to define it, it's, it's a way in which a project is kind of built and made possible to the um, in, in reality, it is not a kind of a hypothetical project. Typically, most of the schools or design studio, what we do is actually we uh, float a hypothetical design brief and uh, then we engage with the design uh, learning, teaching and learning process. But in fact, there is a difference, a shift in this whole process where the design that is evolved out of uh, the studio along with the uh, students and this student project is going to go out to get, get built. And this is an amazing opportunity for the student, the graduate who is actually in the middle of their journey, uh, especially at the end of foundation years and uh, moving towards higher semester level. One is getting to uh, getting an opportunity to work on an outreach project. This is possible only because the school has a very strong pedagogy. And now let us see what how this learning pedagogy is done. And it is called experiential learning. Uh, experiential learning is quite often uh, spoken by many of the faculty members and experts. Uh, so let us see how experiential learning is uh, 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 kind of taken through in the studio level at School of Architecture, and also how this experiential learning as a pedagogy would uh, evolve out to make different outcomes. One of the outcome is the outreach project, and it's a very tall task for the school. I'll come to the details uh, soon. Now, first, let us understand now there are two operational terms in this class. One is about experiential learning and how experiential learning can reach to become an outreach project. That is a real-time project being built by the school and by the students funded by an external agency and how we get this project uh, enforced. And the kind of uh, confidence that it renders to the student is amazing. And also the endorsements that the school has achieved through this particular uh, pedagogy and this process. So experiential learning. So the first operational term here is experiential learning because that is the teaching learning pedagogy that we, uh, uh, we need to kind of... Uh, 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 it's a it's a tool that is enforced within the studio so that the student goes through an experience of doing. So learning through experience is something which is very profound uh, and one of the most evolving or emerging trends or methodologies of design teaching is design and build, which is very uh, kind of um, less stated within nationally. Whereas internationally, this is one of the most emerging design pedagogies where you design and build. And it's a very tall task, both for the institute as well as it's a great experience, uh, learning experience for the student. Under experiential learning, uh, what do we do is it's, it's nothing but learning through reflection and by doing things. Okay, so the components, very essential components or the skill components one may need at this point is observation skills. How do you interact with each other? How do we explore with uh, material and technology and beyond all of which the reflection back to what you've learned. So this is very important and this becomes a very reinforced learning process so that the student can achieve uh, greater confidence and also the knowledge that is imparted till third semester. It's in the fourth semester where we do uh, this outreach project where it gets reinforced. This reflection, strong reflection is very important in the learning process. Now, uh, in experiential learning, there is a direct engagement of the student with art. 
with material, with technology, and definitely with community. It's a real situated, grounded problem that is given in the class and people are engaging with the community because you have a greater responsibility of getting back to the same community with whom we started with and also to build for them. So one is getting skill for that. The second is to kind of get the right brief and the right questions of the community to get engaged with the, uh, within the class. And also, uh, it, uh, as I mentioned now, it's a real situated context that we work with. So this is a very different kind of uh, pedagogical method, even within experiential learning as a larger macrocosm. Now, for this, we need to do a lot of other uh, uh, allied things, allied activities like travel, hands-on work with material and medium, and also your skills to communicate with people. So this, these are very essential because uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, right at the student level, one is kind of engaging with the actual real-time client who is the society or the community for whom we are working with. Then how do we work with? That is, you need to have a good skill set to work with power tools, to work with a particular material, which we call it the poetics of the material. And also we need to travel and kind of be like uh, that clan feeling, that sense of uh, being in a family, because it's a very big, complex task which we have in hand. So we do it together as a collective. So it's not like single objective um, gains, but it's a larger collective objective that we are learning in the whole process. So the jingle of the school at uh, Christ is, uh, it's called C, that is observation, wonder, that like whenever you wonder, I wonder what it is, I wonder how it is. So that the kind of the, the attribute of asking a question, this is the beginning of a research process. So seeing is deeper observation and representation, wonder to ask a right question or a set of questions, and then explore these questions to kind of to evolve a right design solution uh, for the questions that we are posing for the community, very grounded or situated within a context. Now, second uh, operational term in this uh, uh, class is uh, outreach project. So when we actually engage with this teaching learning process, uh, which is experiential learning, which I've explained it now, and one of the outcomes of experiential learning could be an outreach project, which is one of the best and the most difficult and the complex outcomes, which is going to render the maximum learning experience and also the kind of endorsements that school has uh, been rewarded with, uh, really talks about the kind of uh, quality to which we have reached up and also kind of uh, the, uh, the uh, publications and the kind of public domain, how they are able to kind of uh, uh, reach out to us to understand this knowledge that we have generated through this. So this experiential learning, bringing out an outreach project is a tall task, as I mentioned before, both for the Institute and a great experience for the students who are engaging with it. Now, to do outreach projects, we need several settings to be set before we start with outreach projects. One is the place, that is the lab or kind of the use of power tools that you may require to do it, the kind of simulations and environment that is required for that. So for all of this, the infrastructure becomes very, very important to be set before we kind of uh, go out to work with students along with the community to build a project, a live project. Next is the people, you know, because it is not about just like uh, in a firm we are doing a project, but it's in academia. So there is a curriculum to it. There is a syllabus which is working behind it, which very clearly talks about what are the learnings by doing this. More than the project getting commissioned, we are actually it's, we are in the process of learning. We are in academia. So there is a rigorous process of uh, ex external experts and uh, board of studies which work within the school along with the university to set a syllabus more conducive for this teaching learning process and also the outcomes that is being reviewed annually. And constantly this particular syllabus is getting reviewed. Second is the art of making because it's very important that the students achieve the right amount of skilling uh, the right amount of skill to work with power tools and then to kind of uh, start engaging with uh, this construction process or the tectonics of while we work with the selected material. So today what we are going to look at is uh, the poetics of bamboo that we the school has attempted and the kind of 
the whole experience through which uh, the learning has happened. And the last part is about the endorsement. Who has endorsed us? Endorsed us means has been credited. I mean, we've been credited with a lot of uh, positions or uh, awards uh, for the same, for engaging with the community with through this real-time project. Then there is art. This is a skillful, uh, you know, as all of you have uh, are uh, kind of already kind of informed about architecture is an amazing realm of learning and aesthetical um, a part of technology. So it's not just the engineering of buildings, but also the art or the aesthetics of putting the design together and embellishing it with the aesthetics of that. So the art part becomes very strong and the, very artfully how you work with the material is very important. Then developing the connect. How do you develop the connect with the community? Who is that who is going to connect us with the community? And how do we kind of reach them? And how do we kind of conduct this uh, uh, process? So let us now add color to all of this. That is the place, you know, you need the best of lab facilities. We need the best of simulation facilities, including the softwares and soft tools. So the infrastructure becomes very, very important in this uh, uh, um, uh, pedagogical method. Second is the people. So we have uh, Professor Nilkan Chaya, architect Prem Chanda worker, some of the very prominent and eminent accomplished academic academicians and industry from the industry. Uh, people are working along with us to review the syllabus and to review the kind of productions that has come out of uh, these kind of studios, very special studios, what we call it. Uh, so there are the people behind it to uh, to work along with us is very important. Then the making, we have uh, one of the best uh, carpentry workshop and um, uh, clay, and uh, right now we are developing also the textile part of it. Uh, so the making becomes very important. That is, how do we work with it? You know, how how the student gets skilled. Now, many a times we also sign up MOUs with the industry also. So how do we kind of join hands with the industry? It's very important. So in fact, what happens is uh, this experiential learning is really kind of uh, getting you connected with the entire network of people and uh, material. Uh, so it's very important that you are getting connected with industry, you are getting connected with consultants. So the making of the project and uh, the kind of facilities for that is quite important and who is going to skill you. Now the art part of it, we have some of the best facilities and the professionals and resource people who work uh, along with the student to kind of uh, develop this uh, art part of it. That is the aesthetical skills that is required because it's not just a tectonics. It's about the art of making. And then Studio on Wheels is a pedagogical method that we strongly follow that every studio travel and kind of engage with the community. It's not just for the documentation of a place as it is done in a study tour. This is not a study tour. It is a flexible classroom where we move out of the studio or the classroom uh, to conduct the studio out with the community. So we hire space in the place where we are traveling to. And you know it's an amazing different process that we follow to get the whole of this outreach project possibility. So what I'm trying to say is the outreach project is a final outcome for which you need a number of processes to be very actively present so that it engages uh, to, uh, to kind of uh, develop the kind of right objectives that is intended from this uh, particular studio. So there is a number of facing, you know, the project facing which happens while we teach. Because any semester is 16 week long and typically this is done at the fourth semester level. That is the end of foundation year where we you will be engaged with the outreach project. The phase one of this particular process is called the skilling process where uh, the student needs to work with the material and also the learn the right kind of skills to kind of communicate with the community because you need different kinds of skill set when you're working in a rural area versus an urban versus you are working on a single built typology. So you need to kind of work with the, uh, or you need to develop the right skills to communicate with the community. So the, uh, the we have a course called the art of description that is uh, you know, how do you describe the art or the design that we have developed and how do we communicate that with the community? It becomes very important. So the skilling is very important in phase one of uh, this particular studio. Second is prototyping. That is, you work uh, for long hours in this workshop where we actually, so from the studio, we develop the design or, you know, in this case, what you are seeing is the joinery that we have prototyped. 
So once the prototype uh, design is ready, so we take it to the workshop and develop the necessary prototyping uh, for samples. And then the prototype is tested for its uh, conformity and the selected prototype will go out for construction. And the last phase is design and build. And that this, this is what I'm saying. In 16 weeks to achieve this is a tall task. And uh, at the design and build phase, it's uh, to kind of engage with the spatial design one. Second, it's to seek funding because who is going to fund this project? It's very important. So imagine the student is participating in understanding how a project get funded, especially in these cases, we look, look, uh, look out for a socially engaged uh, projects. So we are building for a community who are needy community. So you need fund, funding, external funding agencies uh, to fund this project, and then finally to manage and construct this. So what type of drawings go to the site? And how does this uh, drawings get communicated with the team or the consultants who are at site? So this entire management of construction is also learned in the whole process. So this is a holistic learning of understanding architecture beyond uh, a studio realm or beyond just a studio desk. So it, uh, the mentor is much beyond uh, a teacher, but one who is kind of hand-holding you, initiating you to kind of design, to develop the design, prototype it, and then take it to the site for its construction. So here is, so I thought I'll just pull out one of our uh, projects, which has been completed and handed over. And uh, this special studio, we call it Christ Rural Studio. Uh, and uh, uh, the project which you are going to look at is the poetics of bamboo. So typically it is called poetics in material that is meant for the community. Uh, so this is where a university, now we are a deemed to be university under central government, uh, which comes within the UGC rules. Uh, so we have uh, beyond the various schools or departments of academia, we also have centers of excellence. One such center for excellence is called Center for Social Action. So School of Architecture work in collaboration with Center for Social Action because we need to get connected to the kind of group or the community or the collective for whom we need to work for, for and render a professional service. So uh, CSA has a, a wonderful network of rural areas, slums in urban areas, and many such. And they do a lot of social engineering, and it's been a kind of a trademark of Christ uh, University. Now, Christ, uh, with its uh, vision statement as uh, excellence and service, uh, in fact, it is this ecosystem has that has given the school to kind of develop such a pedagogy and also to develop a studio called Christ Rural Studio. And it has been acknowledged as one of the best practices of the uh, university. And it's uh, to define it, what, what do we do? It's an applied research studio. Applied research means there is a huge component of research. We are actually bringing back a knowledge base back to architecture, one. Second, we apply it. That is, we go uh, for an outreach project and get it built so that we get to know, you know, what are the pros and cons of such a kind of a design and how do we kind of embellish that, you know, who is the person or the uh, funding agency that is going to fund this or back this project. So a lot of these. Now, research about what? It's about the material, you know, the material which is locally sourced because we are doing a very green approach to design. So it has to be locally resourced, sourced. And being bamboo as the poetics that we have engaged in this particular project, what we have done is we identify industries uh, with, from whom we can actually uh, get seasoned bamboo. So uh, in this particular case, uh, we have uh, done an MOU with Uravu Equilings, uh, which is based in Vainar. So what we are seeing here is a kind of a um, grounded engagement with industry at the same time, an academia with a rich research component to it. So whenever you select a school for your design studies, it's very important for you to understand what are those additional experiences that you are going to get along with your degree that you are seeking for. Okay, so uh, now just to kind of help you understand in which semester, it is in the fourth semester, and this is the design main design studio. And it is an applied research studio, which also involves publication as well as service learning. Service learning means while you are studying, we are also offering service back to the uh, society. So this is one of the mission statements of the school also that be uh, located in Bangalore. How do we kind of participate in the local reconstruction of the uh, region? 
so in that sense, uh, we have engaged with people uh, in the uh, suburbs of Mysore, uh, the suburbs of Bangalore city, and very many different uh, and di suburbs of uh, Kola district. So these are the different spaces where we have worked. And it's a very tall task, both for the teacher to be very uh, practice oriented. Second, the students is having an amazing, thrilling experience. And it's a kind of unforgettable uh, kind of uh, experience that they earn out of uh, this particular uh, studio. So the rural studio, uh, the uh, one very important, the facing one is where the skilling happens. So as part of the skilling, we don't generally do just uh, be in a lab and cut uh, bamboo pieces and you know, try joinery and kind of uh, waste this material. What we do is even at the skilling, skilling level, we take up a small project which can be developed over two days. So this particular bridge that you're seeing in Wynad is a bridge which was uh, uh, flooded during the rains, uh, torrential rains of 2018 in Wynad. So what we did is as part of the skilling process, we also built a bridge. So what we may uh, uh, using for skilling, those members are used to kind of design and build a structure back for the community. So this is a very complex tasking that the teacher or the group who is working with you along with you has to kind of craft or predetermine what are this skilling components that the student may tend to do work along with. And how do we use those uh, units back into a larger structure which is under design. So here is a bridge which we have uh, uh, made for the uh, village of uh, Vainad, Trikai Peta. The village name is called Trikai Peta, which was covered in the local TV as well, as well as in the local newspapers because it was a very momentous time both for the teachers, the school and also for the students who were engaging with it. I'll come to the details of this uh, sooner. In prototyping, what we did here is uh, typically, bamboo is um, uh, bamboo is a grass, as you all know. So, bamboo has uh, three parts to it. The lower part, which is typically used for all structural members, which is roughly around four inches to six inches dia. There is a mid part to this grass, uh, which is uh, typically used, uh, 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 which is much cheaper to use, but not as strong as the base part. And there is a top part that is the upper uh, one third, which is used only for aesthetical purpose or non-structural elements. So what happened is uh, uh, always the grass is cut. Most of the time the grass is cut for this lower one third uh, for its structural stability. So what we tried to explore, the question we were asking is how can we kind of engage with the mid part of the grass so that we can save the bottom part uh, for the bamboo clusters to survive because when you cut the base bamboo it affects the cl bamboo cluster because the species we were using is bamboo bambusa so we were looking at the mid part of the grass and the uh, bamboo uh, clustering of bamboo is what we have explored in joinery clustering of bamboo is that the mid part since it's not structurally as strong as the six inch size here we get some uh, sometimes two and a half to four inches that's a four inches the maximum dia we get in mid part of the bamboo so what we did is a number of small pieces when it comes together, it actually renders more strength than a single um, lower one third. So this is something which was a great um, uh, revelation which has happened during this whole process of designing. And also instead of tying it with the rope, we actually look, looked at uh, riveting it with uh, clamps and use of metal within this joinery technique. So this is something which was a very interesting take back after, uh, after this particular studio. So after we put prototyped, so we also worked on this bridge project, which I mentioned before. So these are my students who are working at site. And there are also consultants who are along with them working. And we are also there at site along with them to kind of help them understand and also to help them how to use the power tools. And so this is the project in which actually, in fact, they learned how to even split the bamboo to connect and join bamboo and the different parts being used as a structural member and a non-structural member. Structural member is one which takes the stresses or helps in transferring the load of the roof or even the uh, flat, uh, the bridge part of it, uh, back to the, the ground. And the non-structural members are members like a wall piece or maybe a walking pathway. So these are non-structural members, which are more like a paneling. 
So we looked at structural and non-structural members and how do we use bamboo very appropriately. So this studio's uh, larger objective is also to use uh, uh, one is appropriate selection of material and sec sec second is using the appropriate tectonics uh, back to the environment because every act of an architect can impact environment. So we this was one of the most green projects that we have done um, uh, back for the environment. Now, as part of the rural studio, the last part is the construction and the management of the uh, project at site. So what you're seeing on the top is a project two, which was a major project of the studio. And uh, what you're seeing at the bottom layer is what we call it the skilling phase uh, where we built a bridge for the community. So the upper one is uh, a snake venom treatment center. It is a three-bedded clinic that we built with bamboo uh, for the community. And um, uh, it is uh, located in a uh, village called Halikere Hundi in the suburb regions of uh, Mysore uh, city. So we, in, in the process, so this is where we are coming back to um, what are those distinctive practices and how did we kind of uh, make academia more impactful. Uh, so it's very important to understand uh, that academia need not remain only at a scholarly level. Uh, it can definitely render a service back to the society and make a more impactful or meaningful contribution back to the society while we are still learning and uh, doing teaching and learning process, processes. So uh, what, what are the endorsements that we are uh, endowed with? First one is the International Competition Lon uh, the, uh, London Design Biennale, which we were uh, selected. Uh, and we were the only institution to be part of London Design Biennale, along with very acclaimed and accomplished firms like B.V. Doshi's uh, um, uh, san um, uh, firm uh, Sangat. Uh, then Yatin Pandya's firm, so many such, uh, which are very uh, nationally renowned firms, along with the firms, the ours was the only institution to take part in London Design Biennale. Then Lafarge holds him award for sustainable construction. We won the participation award. In fact, we did not win a gold or a silver or a bronze, but we won the participation award because to get an entry into or to be selected to participate in the final run of the Lafarge Hulsim Award uh, for Sustainable Construction is an amazing endo uh, endorsement that one can get for the quality of work that we have given. The last one, which is a very recent one, uh, there is a ranking, World University Ranking for Real Impact, WURI. Uh, and under which, uh, from Christ University, four projects were selected, uh, one of which is from School of Architecture's Rural Studio. So now you can imagine the quality of these projects that are rendered and the kind of learning experience that the student has got, beyond which the work has rendered a real impact on back to the society. So this is where I think we stand apart from many of the other institutions and schools, uh, which where we do a very meaningful uh, work along with um, um, uh, the society. Yeah, I think uh, London Design Biennale I have uh, already mentioned. So these are the two major uh, competitions or endorsements where we were, the moment you are selected means which is a stamp of the quality of work that we are engaging with and also the kind of clear emerging trends of teaching, learning, pedagogy that are uh, uh, done at school. The third one is now teaching learning is not limited or the experience of the student is not limited to the teachers in the institute, but we engage or enter into several other MOUs also while we do the outreach projects. So as part of this uh, particular poetics in bamboo, we could complete two projects. One is the pedestrian bridge reconstruction. Second is the snake venom treatment center in Mysore. Now, uh, collaboration with the industry, that is MOU with Rural Equilings. And beyond that, uh, we also have consultants working along with the teachers in the studio. So the student is seeing a very interesting holistic uh, making of a project and also the funding agency who was funding our project with this was an 18 lakh project that is one which you are seeing to your left it's an 18 lakh project uh, uh, project cost of 18 lakhs so who funds it how do we manage these funds how do we kind of engage with working drawings and the drawings reaching onto site on time and also to you are skilled enough to kind of work on this project all of which has been a great learning experience 
So collaboration with the industry and the number of MOUs that the school has signed up for this particular project to get embellished is amazing. So, uh, so what happens uh, when you look at the teaching learning, uh, uh, pr uh, the procedures that are engaged at school is to understand that it is much beyond just a scholarly learning or just an engagement of, okay, I teach, you learn. No, it is much more than that, okay? So your, your engagement, your connect back with the industry, the number of labs you're engaging with, the number of consultants you are uh, getting a chance to meet with while you are working on this project, the type of grit that you get and the whole pro pro uh, the management and the selection process of how do we kind of take the project back to the site for construction. And beyond that, being in academia, definitely there is a research component that is a new knowledge given back to the fraternity of architecture, that is research. And also we have published paper uh, from this particular project, one on the pedagogical method itself, and the other one we work on the uh, construction methods that are employed within this project. Then the value addition and the unique identity to the curriculum. This makes the whole curriculum of architecture learning, undergraduate learning at School of Architecture very, very unique with a value addition to the graduate who is coming out of this particular project. Now, how do we gauge it? I'll just come to it. The alumni, uh, what are they doing? Uh, the kind all of which will come to it sooner and very quickly I'll be concluding my session also. Now this is a collaboration with Uravu Ecolink uh, and uh, then the paper publication that we have done and beyond all of which this amazing undergraduate curriculum uh, that has been able to encourage applied research and outreach project uh, in the built realm uh, that do within academia. So this is the team uh, who has been working on this. Uh, now, this brings us to the point like, oh, what is the school? Who is the school? And what are the programs that I can get from the school? We have an undergraduate program and a master's and a PhD program. We have an international MOU with Boston Architectural College, Lille University Junior College, and also Science Po France. Uh, the last one which we are working on is ICP, that is the Catholic Institute of Paris. Uh, and also we do conduct uh, short-term international, the earlier th three which I've mentioned are long-term MOUs where we actually engage, uh, engage even with student exchange programs, which I'll be coming to it sooner. International and national collaborative studios that we do it, which are short-term uh, studio programs that we do with um, uh, um, international architects or firms or with other schools. Uh, so one such to mention is Martin Fissett Studio from Canada, and uh, the other one is Southeast Asian Collaborative Studio, where we had seven schools participating. So your peer group is not just the 40 or 80 whom you are meeting at school, but much beyond it from other schools. So this is the kind of edge that you may need to develop while you are in an institute. And also the interdisciplinary uh, courses and also the kind nature of research that we do. Interdisciplinary courses, you, uh, you will see much of it in the elective basket. So it's very important. It's the elective basket that renders an edge to the student and a particular uh, acumen for the person or the graduate who is coming out of that school. So we have uh, inter uh, interdisciplinary courses which involve UI, UX in design. That is with computer science department, along with architecture, we have developed a new course on UI UX, which is typically offered in CSE, but in design is something which we are offering it at school. Then virtual reality and uh, in, in architecture is the other elective which we offer. Then we have psychology department, so behavioral architecture and psychology. It's at another course, interdisciplinary courses. So these are a few to name it. So the electric basket is really rich with both building sciences as well as art baskets, or uh, uh, it is uh, enriched with uh, uh, very transformational uh, uh, soft tool learning or um, uh, the, the digital learning, which is the most upcoming um, phase in architecture. So uh, is the graduate proficient enough when you go out, of, out with a degree certificate? Are you proficient enough to be back in industry with an edge? That's where, what the institute should be looking at. Now we have completed the composite bamboo construction. The current ongoing ones are the Council of Architecture funded urban project, which we are working on. Soon it will be completing. Beyond all of this the research projects, we also have consultancy projects, which are live projects, which are uh, being uh, coordinated by some of uh, the selected teams within the school and also the design patents. 
So I think uh, this is something makes the school so different from uh, just a mere education. That is, you are engaging depending on your interest, either in research or in project consultancy or with life projects or uh, along with uh, developing design patents. So this is our new building. I think as uh, thank you, Nora, for uh, introducing that. This is an amazing realm where uh, the, our students are uh, studying. Uh, and also it shows the promise of the school, uh, which the university has uh, given us. Uh, that is uh, looking at the nature of the growth and the kind of engagements and the global outlook that we are bringing in. So this is uh, 1.4 lakh uh, square feet of uh, built up, uh, completely built up uh, uh, within the Kingiri campus, which is a beautiful 80 acre campus. This project cost is over 60 crores and it's a uh, the barrier free green building. It's a frame structure detailed with trellis wrap and completely passively cooled. And we have the state of art lab to your left-hand side, you can see a glass, we call it the crystal block. So that's where all the uh, computer labs are located. And I had the opportunity to be the design lead of this particular project. So the USP of the department is experiential learning, which we've been explaining and um, uh, taking a journey through. Uh, then social engagement, definitely. So what are we, uh, 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 what are our promise back to the society? It's the engagement that the uh, academia is having with the society. Then the latest one we have developed is the study abroad program for with uh, Fran, I mean, uh, Lille University in France, and also student patents in design. This is one of its kind in nationally. We have seven patents that to students are the inventors seven patents to our credit. So what is the study abroad program? So we have a junior college Lille University for smart and resilient city program. On seventh and eighth semester, uh, the student is getting an uh, opportunity to travel abroad, study, and then come back. Uh, the degree is uh, certified, I mean, uh, given by the university, but this is a study abroad semester so they will get a year's time to make their decision and move further yes the seven design patents which i had mentioned are these i always love to mention their names Molloy biswas joel sebastian elizabeth susan daffodil nikita fame jersia and aishwarya so these are the seven students who have obtained their um, design patents published along with uh, Professor Shainu Arvi, uh, and this is coming out of an elective. This is an amazing opportunity that the students at uh, School of Architecture is getting. And uh, beyond that, um, uh, it also, it always uh, no, is asked like, what is my opportunity once I complete my studies? Yes, here are the different firms and NGOs or government agencies, our students are all spread out. Only a few have kept it, which are very prominent and uh, very unique. Uh, and very renowned and uh, beyond that you know around 74 percent when they are placed in private firms we have also people who are entrepreneurs so because that's the kind of um, confidence the graduate has earned while uh, they are doing their five-year program with us uh, to be an entrepreneur to start an office of your own at the same time there are uh, paid internship in the ninth semester uh, where we have seen several of them working with ngos also so this is something which is a additional value uh, instilled in them while they are with us now beyond this uh, i think uh, who are your teachers it's very important uh, uh, many of us are from uh, the renowned universities both nationally and internationally so on to your left you can see the various universities where we are graduated from and also, uh, we have international faculty working along with us. Professor Katia Mawson is a permanent faculty. Uh, she's a U.S. citizen. And uh, Professor Carolyn Lavoy is from Utah State University, U.S., who was on sabbatical. So you keep seeing uh, these professionals or researchers or uh, um, pro uh, uh, practicing architects so who are actually being part of our uh, larger campus. Uh, Professor Chiara Chiodoro from Italy is uh, another adjunct faculty who works along with us. And she's the one who works along with me in Rural Studio, uh, very motivated and very kind of passionately engaged with the uh, rural development of India. Uh, so that's the kind of passion you see with the teachers and the kind of experience rates. I think uh, more than 25% of us are with over 20 years of experience. So you can imagine the kind of senior teachers who are going to work along with you in the undergraduate level itself. 
Uh, so these are the endorsements. I've already spoken about it, about the World University Real Impact Ranking and how our outreach project has been selected for this. And Lafarge Olsum Award, London Design Biennale, Jeffrey Cook Award, just to name a few of them. And you, as you all know very much, uh, uh, Christ gives an amazing campus life and the kind of facilities that we have in the, within Kemkiri campus is amazing. Uh, right from congregational spaces to gym to uh, the hostel facilities for both, both boys and girls and also the state of art labs that we have uh, uh, set up at the institute. Yes, the cultural life at uh, Christ has always been exceptional uh, because uh, we believe that, truly believe that uh, there is a self within you and you need to groom both the academic front as well as there is a holistic development of you as an individual. So the institute or the larger realm of the university should offer you these opportunities. So these are some of the events that happen at uh, uh, the campus. Uh, so coming to the admission process, many a times we are asked why you are not there in KEA or CET uh, uh, selection process because uh, ours is not a state university nor we come under KEA. We are not affiliated with VTU. Uh, with a state university or a larger public university. We are a private university under UGC from central government. So even right from the induction of faculty to the student induction, there is a particular quality we maintain. So we are A plus NAC uh, in terms of our uh, accreditation. And uh, to uh, if you feel, uh, if you wish to join us, uh, you can apply online at christuniversity.in website you can go to the admissions and make an application only through an online application you can make an entry for the selection process then immediately you'll get an interview call and with the portfolio submission request and there is an online interview which happens uh, so if at all if you are interested please make an attempt and uh, uh, join uh, i mean apply as soon as possible because uh, the uh, applications are getting closed soon uh, so uh, still there is a, a few seats uh, left so uh, if you are interested, you can uh, please come over and make an application. And the selection criteria uh, beyond the NATA and uh, grade 12 or uh, 10 plus 3 uh, requirements as stated by council. Beyond that, we have this personal interview and the portfolio scores, which we may consider for your selection process. Now, what do you mean by a portfolio? Uh, the portfolio which illustrates your skills and achievements. Both are required. So art and allied areas such as fine arts, sketching, doodling, photographs, um, or uh, performing arts and music that uh, you have done, or public speaking. So many of these, we, uh, we allow it to come on board. Because when you sit in a class of 40, uh, they are not the uh, just the students who sketch well. They are also for good public speakers. They are wonderful leaders. They are good sportsmen. So it's a it's a it's a milieu of uh, wonderful palette of uh, skills and um, uh, um, uh, personalities that you meet uh, within your peers peer group. So it's a wonderful experience to be there uh, within that forty. And we have two batches of eighty intake. Uh, but in the portfolio, please use only your own works uh, when you compile your portfolio. Um, and the plagiarism will not be tolerated in the portfolio. Uh, then the preparation for the interview. Many a times I get a call. What do we? How do I prepare for my um, uh, interview? There is nothing to panic about. We just want to know you. So uh, your aptitude in architecture. So through a micro presentation, the questions will uh, broadly revolve around uh, current affairs in architecture and also environmental, material, and cultural sensibilities that you have developed. Uh, at a 10 plus 2 level, we are not expecting you to be an architect or a professional to talk about it, but at your age level and at your knowledge level, what is that sensibility that you have developed over, over a period of time? This is what we are testing during the micro presentation. And also there will be a brief personal interview which follows. And uh, if everything goes well, you'll get an offer letter for admission and further to which you can pay the fee and join. Uh, to contact us, uh, um, uh, one is through the website, you will get all the information. It's very, very transparent system, right from feed to all information are available, and the syllabi, everything is available on the uh, Christ University website. And you can also reach out to me at hod.architecture or anita.sushilan at christuniversity.in. My phone number is 9449 
or through the landline, we, you can reach out to our uh, admin uh, wing as well. So with that, I close. The learning continues. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anita Sushilan. Uh, so if anyone has any questions regarding uh, the session, you can please drop in a message in the YouTube live sessions and I will be moderating the questions. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your time. It was very inspirational and informational, both actually. Um, Are there any questions which uh, the students have? Ma'am, it would actually take some. I would be glad to. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. for that. So, um, there was this one thing that really got in a message. We all got in a message from Christ that it is that the program that School of Architecture or the Christ provides, it is not just defined to develop skills, critical thinking and creative thinking, but it is also steering the values of empathy and community engagement. It's a total holistic development that Christ provides for its students. And I think that is the you know unique aspect that Christ has from other universities. So thank you, ma'am, for, you know, uh, informing about it to everyone for reaching out to us um, also that you had mentioned about the exchange programs that are being available for students so ma'am if you could just tell them like what are the benefits that they get from those type of programs yes uh, uh, Nura actually it is about um, uh, the smart and resilient city program with uh, uh, Lil University, the junior college, uh, Lille Catholic University in France. Lille is a um, city which is uh, the second largest city after Paris. Uh, it's located in the northern county, northern part of uh, France, uh, bondering um, uh, Belgium. So the closest city to it is Brussels, then Paris to it. Okay, So just last uh, couple of months back, I was there at uh, Lille as well. Uh, so it has been an amazing experience uh, to be there. And uh, what we've been very keen to develop over here is smart and resilient cities. They have an amazing um, uh, uh, facility to learn BIM, uh, how BIM is used in um, urban scenario, BIM and SIM also both. Uh, so uh, I think that is the additional skill set that one may uh, kind of uh, um, um, and uh, you know, add on to your uh, uh, graduation degree certificate uh, because smart city programs or smart city projects are some of the most evolving and fast moving projects in India. In the next uh, probably uh, two decades, uh, you will keep seeing the smart cities being developed. And if our graduates have an edge over it, I think nothing like it. And uh, you will be studying in the best of labs internationally available because we are looking at labs and uh, facilities which can give an additional value to what we are. Uh, so, uh, uh, so they are going to be trained in BIM and uh, SIM uh, in the urban scenario. And, um, uh, and it's a one-year program and it happens in the fourth year. That is seventh and eighth semester. You have an opportunity to go out and learn. So the current MOU, what we have done is there is a fee waiver uh, from their side. Uh, if there is a student, last semester we had students from their uh, back at school uh, with our comprehensive studio, eight semester studio. So what uh, the, uh, uh, the memorandum of understanding is that whichever is the host university, I mean host university, that is uh, when uh, a Christ student is moving to Lil you will be paying only the Christ fees. You are not paying the France uh, Lille University's fees, which is far, far higher than that compared to uh, uh, the Christ fee. So you are paying the fee here, uh, but you are getting an opportunity to study abroad. And uh, But only the travel and accommodation you need to be taken care of. And then after one year, you can come back. So our fifth semester, that is when uh, the student is in fifth semester, your orientation starts because you need at least a year's time to do, um, complete your visa process, your preparation, yeah, sufficient information for that. We're also planning for uh, uh, French um, communication skills program, so the French language skills. Typically, it happens in the eighth semester uh, and seven semester electives. Uh, that uh, foreign language they can opt for. And typically what is offered at Christ is French. So we will uh, start that in fifth semester itself for those who are selected for uh, the study abroad program. Uh, 
so a uh, friends learning um, opportunity is another one because when you travel it would be very nice to know the language and uh, so that you feel very comfortable and communicate well when you are living there and staying there so and uh, there is both the international office we have a very amazing international office with christ who will help you with these kind of uh, connecting the student back with the international uh, that is especially the travel and visas and all of that and same way the international office there will receive you just as when their students came in actually our international office received the students and they make them comfortable and connect us connect them to the respective schools where they are coming so we had student from uh, Lille University last semester yes yes I hope I have answered your question Yes, ma'am, you did. So, yeah, it is actually very important. Like BIM is actually a growing trend in architecture right now. That is um, building infrastructure modeling. It is actually growing. It's a fast moving thing. So it is uh, important that students get to know about that as well. That's right. Yes. Because uh, you, you uh, see, it's been a myth. It was it's only a myth that we work in a design office. You know, like if you are ad, ad, additionally skilled, especially in BIM, actually you can run an office which offers only um, services based on projects which are based on BIM, which is building information modeling and simulation tools. And we also have climate responsive architecture simulation that's building physics and simulation. So uh, these add-on skills are very, very important for you to now practice. So it's not just that, you know, gone are those days where we work only with CAD and uh, 3D software tools where renders are made. Okay, so I think um, I think it's a responsibility of the institute to render these uh, opportunities for the uh, students who are joining us. Yes, yes ma'am, and also Christ is one such university where they keep reviewing their syllabus every time. So it is like uh, they have a very unique and interesting structure for their program courses which makes students learn with hands-on practice as well, like how you mentioned about the studio on wheels and the other initiatives taken by the university. Ma'am, uh, next, Sarah is having a question. So. Sure, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, the talk was very interesting, and uh, I really like the new concepts that Christ University is coming up with. It was, Thank you. I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had a question, especially related to the Why Not project. Um, yes. When you created this new course material, did you see like an obvious change in the way students approach the design in the later semesters? Or was it just a more sensitized version of the same thing? No, I think um, uh, this actually blooms in their thesis, especially uh, the kind of studio experience that they had in the previous eight semesters. Uh, because mm -hmm. ninth semester is internship and 10th is when they do their their own. Uh, so we call the studio on wheels and in 10th semester it's a self on wheels that you are traveling by yourself, you are getting on, I mean, uh, knowing a community and you work for the community. You won't believe it, the nature of projects out of, uh, I think nearly four socially sensitive projects we had, which works for migrating, migra uh, migrating laborers, uh, then communities, especially SOS and, you know, uh, the um, the work which is meant for uh, the communities uh, which have moved from Bangladesh into India. So how do we kind of work around that? So it moves to a very different scale, actually. What are the policies? It starts from the national policies which protects them and uh, which do not protect them. And then coming back to the community and their built environment currently there, and eventually, one of our students, actually, she has proposed uh, how uh, one can uh, look at uh, modular uh, design techniques uh, in these realms where uh, there is a module which works and how flexible the design is and very quickly they can put together their uh, habitats. Uh, so it was an amazing approach. you know. So we started with something very uh, material sensitive, but uh, the kind of outcome and the sensibility with which the student worked is very, very different. And uh, it's highly technological and modular um, um, uh, uh, design techniques that she has used applied in that. Another student uh, looked at ephemerality and architecture. Uh, look at that, you know, like one is looking at ephemerality is something very unique about especially Indian and Asian context where things happen. It's like Maya, you know, like it comes and it disappears. 
So even to conduct a base study, it is very difficult uh, because uh, the, uh, the built realm which was created a year back is not existing now. But he or she is going to look at the ephemerality of architecture. So I think uh, these kind of projects had given them beautiful new sensibilities to come up with newer questions which a designer need to ask. So I think um, it, it is not a replication of this, but it's much nuanced way of looking at uh, very uh, strong grounded questions in architecture. I hope thank I have answered you. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. So now we have a few questions from the uh, YouTube uh, comment session. So there's this question from Saga Biani. Are there any electives in your university which offers an architecture to help students to explore other related career opportunities? Yes, we do have one is uh, very importantly to state it interior design. So suppose if you want to, otherwise with a BR degree also, you can um, practice as an interior designer. Definitely it allows you or gives you the license to practice as an interior designer. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's an additional um, elective which gives you much more expertise in interior design. So to, to give an example, the other one is uh, climate responsive architectures because some of the students we have found that they are very keen and skilled to learn building physics. So simulation is something which we have explored. So th these are the newer career opportunities. It's not just that they are limited only to a design office. They can be part of a larger firm, a research firm, labs, uh, many such. Yes, ma'am, understood. Um, there's also another question from Amrita Daga. So it's a very interesting question, actually. Uh, what are the must key skills or aptitudes for school students who are aspiring students to study architecture and see a uh, aspiring career ahead? Yes, I think something which I often give it the, I mean, I um, give uh, sessions in IC3 platforms also for school counselors, because uh, we have collective of school counselors who interact with the university to understand, especially design skills that are required at the school level to engage with design studies. One is collaborative skills. You need to have an amazing collaborative skills because design is one such career where we are going to work in teams. So um, collaboratively working and your communication skills have to be really good, ideally. Uh, but de definitely at school also, we help them to uh, sharpen this acumen. Uh, if you have one, and also if sometimes we find that they are quite uh, kind of uh, introverted or uh, um, unable to kind of communicate in terms of language, if it is a very evident uh, um, um, dilemmas, uh, we do work along with such students at the university. We have uh, special uh, centers like CAPS, which helps with uh, spoken English and you know working English. This is something very important uh, uh, when you pursue want to pursue uh, architectural studies. The other one is um, a passion for innovation. You know, because uh, let me tell you, uh, there are different cognitive uh, levels when we work with the different kind of subjects. Designing or creative design is one of the highest cognitive levels where you are imagining and creating newer things. So for this, you need a, um, a passion for uh, uh, a passion to kind of innovate things. So this typically, so how do I find out whether I have this innovation skills, especially when you sketch, when you work with small materials like clay or maybe mat sticks and things like that, no different materials or fabric for that matter, or even stitching and all of that. So you have an amazing way of kind of exploring newer things or putting newer knowledge to kind of in newer formats and working. So the moment you sense that you have a design skill, uh, so you are kind of a, a right candidate to kind of pursue design studies. Uh, the the third one is, see, uh, architectural studies are both logical, that is where you need science skills, at the same time, very, very creative, highly creative. So it's not enough that you need only an art, artistic skills, but also you need a skill in uh, mathematics, because your logical skills should be really good, because uh, this is something which is art and technology. Uh, so to really bloom in this uh, realm, you need to have that. That's one reason why Council of Architecture mandates 
mathematics and physics as mandatory subjects. The new rules also states that chemistry or biology or many other subjects are also allowed. Uh, the recent rule states that, especially for this year's admission. Uh, so, but physics and mathematics are important. So, which actually is the uh, two science uh, uh, streams which are going to render logical skills or you know your logical capabilities are really good. So, uh, these are a few to kind of sum it up in this short time period. If given a time period, I can really talk about it. You know, what are those skill set and what kind of uh, career architecture is. Uh, what are the, those kind of uh, work realms that we have? Actually, it's amazingly different, you know. You really enjoy your life. It's not that you're doing a job. You're actually enjoying your career. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm celebrating my profession, you know. I think I'm uh, over 28 years now in this uh, realm. But enjoy every year, you know. Every year meeting new people, working on new projects, uh, uh, ability to you know or the opportunity to travel from place to place opportunity to innovate uh, think fresh you're not do any time doing the same old uh, mechanical job so i think uh, we are celebrating our career than we are doing a job yes ma'am so yes. So if some time permits uh, we can talk about uh, the career in architecture and the skill set and many such aspects yes yes ma'am so she she asked this uh, another question as well so how is the architecture area and how is the demand and supply ratio in india and i think most of what you said actually answers the questions but yes ma'am yeah. yeah i think uh, uh, one thing we must understand that many a times we look at architecture as more confined only to design firms but I think uh, if the institute can open you up into multiple career opportunity, I think there is no dearth of any job of, uh, opportunity. You know, some of our students are working in Titan. You know, after BIAC, they are working in Titan. And uh, we have a very strong placement cell as well. Uh, so, so it's very important that uh, you get placed in the right um, realm where you enjoy your career. Okay, yeah. So I think uh, that there is no dearth, you know, right from project managers to uh, building physicists to uh, designers to academicians to researchers. There is a whole uh, realm of possibilities which opens up after BIAC. Yes. But the school has to give that kind of uh, strong elective baskets. That I'm very clear. Otherwise, I think it is not possible. Just with the code program and a few very normal electives, I, I don't think it is this is possible. Yes, ma'am. So you can test a curriculum by just looking at their elective baskets. And that gives you the opportunity of your placement. And also in every placement um, interview, what they ask is beyond curriculum, what did you do? I think if the institute has been able to give you or put you in touch with those opportunities, then you are done. And I think they, uh, they'll they pick you like hotcakes. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. So I think with this, we can actually wind up our session. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming here, taking out your time, talking to us about Christ University and about the School of Architecture. It was very insightful, very inspirational to see what Christ does and how differently they do it. So, yes, ma'am, thank you so much for being here with us and, you know, helping out the other students. And I hope uh, who all are interested to join Christ can always go and, you know, check in ChristUniversity.in, their official website for more information. There's also uh, Dr. Anita's mobile number and email ID in the description of the YouTube video link. So thank you, everyone, for being patient with us and having this conversation with us. So thank you, ma'am. Uh Nura, I'll just uh, share uh, um, uh, my contact ID if uh, one is interested. Yes, ma'am, sure. Yeah. So uh, you can uh, reach us out at uh, ChristUniversity.in and also my email IDs plus my phone number. So yes. feel free to contact us, uh, but as early as possible. It is already shared in the YouTube chat as well as the description. So anyone of you who are interested can always go back to the video and check them out. So thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you everyone for 